Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Java, a uh, little introduction to Java. So I hope to make a, a, a bunch of new video series on uh, some of the more popular languages and the most popular of all year after year is, uh, is Java. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that Java is the main language for Android. So if you want to develop uh, Android apps or games, uh, you're going to want to learn Java. Alrighty, but um, for today we're pretty much just going to be making a little hello world and we're going to be installing the IDE. Now IDE is short for Integrated Development Environment and it's just a tool to uh, help us develop um, Java. So to install the IDE, the IDE I like to use is called Eclipse. Uh, you just want to come to Google and type uh, Eclipse and Java. Hit enter and go to the Eclipse downloads page. Oops, <laughs> the Eclipse downloads page. I uh, click on download 64 bit and download. So I'm actually not going to download this. Thank you for downloading Eclipse because I've already downloaded it. So I'll just close out of there. But once you've downloaded it, uh, you click run on your little installer here. Um, a couple of things about Java. Um, it's a C based language and it's a curly brace language. Uh, the cool thing is that um, once you learn one C-based language, you've got a really good heads up to learning a lot more. So things like C Sharp, C++, uh, even JavaScript, PHP, they're all curly brace languages and they all come from um, a mother tongue, this parent language uh, called C, which is a very old language. Um, it's still in use though. All right, so once the uh, Eclipse installer starts up, you want to click Eclipse IDE for Java developers and then click install just here. So I've actually already installed it, so I'll just cancel out of that. And I'll close this down. But once it's installed, you should get the uh, desktop shortcut. So you want to double click on that to start Eclipse. Um, alrighty, so it's going to ask you where, where you want your workspace. Now, um, workspaces are just folders on your computer to organize your projects into. Um, the default one will do us for today. So that's just called workspace. I'll just click OK. And we should get to Eclipse. Good stuff. Alrighty, so when you first run Eclipse, uh, you get this little welcome screen. And uh, we can just click on the X. Alrighty, so this is the main Eclipse IDE. It looks pretty complicated, but uh, it, it'll, it'll all make sense in, in a little while. So a couple of things that we really will be interested in is, one, the Package Explorer over the side here. This is where all of our projects will appear. And it's also where all of the source files to our projects will appear. And the other thing is this big panel in the middle just here. This is the main code window. So this is where we'll be programming code. Um, all right. But first of all, to, to start a Java app or to add a Java application or project to our package explorer, we want to right click and go new and then Java project. The other way that you can do this is actually go up to File and New Java Project. So it's, you know, it's both the same, much of a muchness. Just choose one and uh, go with it. Alrighty, so the Java project that we'll make today, I'll just call it Tutorial 1 and uh, click Finish. And there we go. So we can see it over here in the side in our Package Explorer. So Java is an object-oriented programming language, and that means that we create uh, we create blueprints called classes, and we make instances from that blueprint of of our class. So we could have say a, a fruit blueprint, then we could make an orange instance and a, an apple instance, etc. Uh, but the first thing that we've got to do is uh, is add a main class to our project. So if you right click on the SRC folder, that's short for source, and you go to new. And you come over to class, you click on that, um, you'll get the new class window. So right here, we want to give our class a name. Now, what we're doing here is creating um, an entry point for our program. Java is a virtual machine language. So the computer actually doesn't know how to run Java code. What's going to happen is that the Java virtual machine sits uh, in between our Java code and the CPU. And the Java virtual machine translates our Java code into code that the CPU can actually understand. Yeah, I hope that makes a bit of sense. But when the computer runs our program, it needs to know where to start. 
And the traditional method for starting uh, a program is, is what's called the main method. So that's what we're adding here. But first of all, we have to add a class. So I'm just going to call it main class and click finish. And Eclipse will write the class for us. There it is, public class main class. Um, exactly what a class is, we'll get into a bit later. Uh, it's, it's basically just a blueprint for, for an object for, you know, making things later on. But one of the things you'll notice about uh, Java is that there's curly braces everywhere. Um, that's all inherited from C, this mother tongue. I sort of like to think of all of the C-based languages, they're, they're sort of more just different, different dialects of the same language rather than different languages themselves. Yeah. Now, the other thing I should say is that um, JavaScript and Java are completely different languages. Yeah, they're completely different. Uh, don't get confused. JavaScript is not Java. Anyway, once we've got our class, um, we'll see that these braces just here, these curly braces, define blocks of code. And uh, a code block is just a bunch of statements. At the moment, inside the body of the main class, there, there's nothing since it's, it's empty in these, uh, in these curly braces. But what we want to do is define the main entry point to our program. So this is the method or, or the function that the computer will look for when it wants to know where to start executing our program. And we have to be really specific when we type this. This has to be exactly right or Windows or whatever your operating system is uh, won't know where to start your program. So this is what you have to type, public, static, void, main, uh, string, then a couple of square brackets, uh, call it args, exactly like that. Um, we'll look at this in a lot more detail later, but this is the exact signature that you have to type or the computer won't know where to run your program from. Um, that's the default. You can actually change that, but we won't. Uh, public means that the main method can be seen from anywhere, which is good because we want, you know, Windows or whatever to be able to see it so it can run it. Um, static means that the method belongs to the class rather than to instances of the class. Um, that'll make a bit more sense later on when we are object oriented programming. Void means that it doesn't return anything. So a method is really, is, is really just another word for function. And if you think about a function such as um, square root, square root, you pass it a number and it returns a number to you. So we might pass the number four to a square root function and square root's just going to do its thing, compute, 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 and it's going to return to us two. It's going to compute the square root and return that. So by saying void just here, what we're saying is that main doesn't return anything. Yeah, void's just a keyword that means that main doesn't return anything to the caller which is uh, Windows or whatever the operating system is. And after the method name, which is main in this instance, we've got uh, a parameter list. Now, we're not going to be using this for a little while. Um, this is just in case you want to read like um, files or something that someone's dragged and dropped onto your program. I mean, yeah, we're not going to be doing that for a little while, but, but that's what that is. That's the parameter list. And this has to appear exactly like, like I've got it here. Public, static, void, main, string, and then square brackets, that incident, incidentally just means it's an array. <laughs> um, and then args, this can be different, but everything else has to be the same. Yeah, so we'll look, we'll look at all of this stuff later on. Yeah, arrays and classes and all that sort of stuff. But after you've got the definition for your function, so the um, computer knows where to start running our function, we've got to put um, a code block. And we delineate code blocks with um, curly braces, just like this. And whatever is inside those curly braces is what is run um, when the computer runs the main method. So what we want to do here is just say system.out.println hello world. Just like that. Okay, so this is a Java statement. And one of the interesting things that we could point out at this point is that the full stops just here means belonging to. So print line belongs to out and out belongs to system. Now, these are just objects that are developed by somebody else for us to use in our Java program so that we don't have to develop them ourselves. Uh, print line is just the method that prints uh, information to the screen. So right here, we pass a string as a parameter and uh, the string is just hello world. And the other thing that we have to be careful of is that all Java statements end with a semicolon. That's this little fellow just here. Um, okay, so we should try and run that. Let me just click on the uh, little run icon up here. 
And there we go, down the bottom of the screen, if you click on the console tab, whoops. Uh, you've got a bunch of tabs down here. If you click on the console tab, you should see what you asked um, the Java virtual machine to print to the screen. I should say also that you do need the Java runtime environment installed. Um, maybe I'll put a note at the start of the video. Yeah, but if your program failed to run, so say we've got a typo just here, something like that accidentally, and we hit run. Now it'll come up with problems just here and we can say cancel. And if you come over here to the problems uh, tab, uh, you'll get a little a little message here saying that it doesn't understand what uh, what prif gugu worm. <laughs> it doesn't understand what this means. Um, okay, so one more thing before we go, I want to mention that Java is case sensitive. So if you typed, well, let me just change this back to uh, print ln, short for print line. Uh, if you typed capital main just here. Um, the operating system's not going to understand that that's your starting point. Um, if you typed a lowercase s just here, um, you know, yeah, it's not going to work. So, so Java is case sensitive. Be careful of case. And that, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. So that's Hello World in, in Java. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.